We are ready to begin our koi fish art project. And so you will look for your good white drawing paper. This will be the background for the koi fish. And in addition to this, you're going to need one or two pieces of white computer paper, one of which is going to be used to practice drawing the koi fish before we put it on the good paper. You know, sketch first, make your mistakes here, iron them out, and then draw on the good paper. So let's start with our sketch paper and let's learn how to draw a koi fish because that's a very important part, obviously, of this project. All right, so you know that most all drawing, not most, all drawing, can be done using shapes. And we are going to use some shapes for our koi fish. Now we want to kind of imply motion as our fish is swimming through the water, so we're going to kind of curve his body. Let's start out with a nice circle. Does it have to be perfect? No. But you can always kind of adjust it if you need to. So I have my circle here. You can kind of erase and kind of redo. I'm drawing again very dark, you know, dark with the dark pencil so you can see it. When you do this on your good paper, you should be drawing very lightly. We don't want to see the pencil lines. Now what I'm going to do, right in the center of the circle, almost like a balloon string, balloon and string, is I'm going to draw a line that kind of gives the curve of the koi fish's body. Because remember, we're showing that he's swimming through water and fish use their body motion to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the outside of this circle, the outside, and I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do that in a minute. And we are going to get smaller and closer to the line as we come to the end until it touches at the bottom, okay? Right here on the outside of that circle, we are going to curve our line and we are going to meet at the end of the line. Now, if you are able to just draw a teardrop free-handed, you may do that too. But I find for beginners, it's easier to do sort of the backbone of the fish to get the curve, all right? Now, as with all good drawing, we don't need all of this inside stuff. So at this point, you would take your eraser and you would get rid of these inside lines. This is the trick in, as to why I want you to draw light, because when you have to erase things, then they don't show up forever. And there it is. Same end result. This one's a little curvier. He's swimming faster. All right, so we have it. From here, we are going to add some fins. Now I'm gonna draw the fins separately first to show you. And basically, the fins are like a leaf and it has a center line to it. This is me uh, demonstrating how to get the shape. And then you do a, a line that bulges out from your center and one that goes below. So that would make a nice leaf. It would also make a lovely fin for a koi fish. So pretty close up here where your circle was is where you are going to draw your fin coming backwards. Now, make sure that the fin is the right size for your size fish. I wouldn't want to draw an itty bitty fin on a great big fish because that would not propel him th through the water. We've talked about this before, proportion. So I, if you need that center line, draw it first and then add your lemon shape to create, or your leaf shape, to create his fins. And I'm going to do that. Smaller fish, smaller fins, and there it is. Now for the tail fin, or the tail, I'm going to do a curvy line that goes out, and we're gonna do the same on the other side, a curly line that goes out. It's okay if it goes off the edge of the paper. This reminds me of a girl's ponytail a little bit, right? Then we'll go from the end of his body and we're gonna copy that curve and we're gonna end his tail on that end. Yeah, I'm gonna leave these two 
lines here. So again, curve up, down, and up like a roller coaster or a girl's ponytail. Up, down, and up. And then come from the very bottom and connect and connect. Fancy koi fish tail, yes? All right, for eyes on this koi fish, we're going to need ovals right at the very edge of his head, touching the edge. You know how to draw ovals. This should not be a big deal. And then he's going to be able to see when we add the dark pupils, another oval inside there. This would be colored in dark later, so I'm gonna just kind of shade it to give you the idea. With me on that? Now we're gonna add fish lips. Koi have uh, pretty pronounced lips. <laughs> I, there's no other better way to say it. So I'm just gonna give an extra little border here that sticks out, and that is his curvy lips. All right. And koi, like catfish, have these little whisker type things that come out. They're very skinny, so be careful how you draw them, not too fat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a koi fish. So let's go over again. Ovals, touching the edge of the head, and a second oval inside for the pupil so he can actually see something. Then we're gonna add the lips, and the lips are just an extra little added boost right there on the front end of his face. And last, that little curve line, sort of like the tail, not quite as curvy, and complete it to make his whisker and out, and there you go. Now you know how to draw the koi fish. We're gonna talk about what to do on the good paper, okay? Remember to start with your basic shapes, draw lightly, you can always erase then, and add the fins, the tail, the eyes, and the whiskers. Oh, and don't forget the lips. All right, let's talk about the next step, adding him to the good background. Oh, but before I do the background, I promised you a, a bloopers reel or what not to do when drawing your fish. And I'm just gonna show you that really quick, what to watch out for. When you draw your circle, you remember I said you need to draw his body coming out from the edge of that circle, okay? If you don't, you draw your circle and you have your nice center line for the curve, and then you draw his body this way and his body this way. Holy cow, he looks more like a tadpole. We see his head bulge and then the body is skinnier. No, in a koi, his body is as fat as his head, so it should come right out here from the edge and right here from the edge. And that's where your koi comes in, so be careful don't draw like too far in on the circle. Put those marks out on the very edge of the circle and follow down. Does that make sense? Yes, we want your koi to be properly shaped so he doesn't look like a tadpole. And he looks like a swimming koi that could become a dragon. All right, that's the big blooper thing that you can do wrong. The other thing is drawing too big of a fin on a fish, too giant. That looks a little silly, almost like a flying fish. The other problem is drawing the fins way too tiny. Okay, so we're looking for the Goldilocks effect. Not too big, not too tiny, but just right. And you may have to erase a couple times to get the fins to be the right size for the fish. All right, so those are the two tips to be watching for as you're drawing your koi fish. Now, let's go to doing the background. I am on the good white drawing paper now, people, and I'm going to begin the background for our fish. I know it's kind of hard to see white on white, but hang with me. All right, so I'm going to put my koi fish in a pond, and when people design their ponds, they often put rocks for the fish to hide around or in, under, and so we're going to add a few rocks to our scene. And I want them kind of off the page a little bit. And so I'm going to use the corner edge of my paper right here. 
and I'm going to draw just kind of an irregular shape in that corner. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go opposite corner, not too wavy, but now I've got two rocks that I can place right here and my fish can swim around them. All right, so my first koi fish is gonna be drawn just the way I showed you. I'm gonna draw lightly at first. I'm gonna do the circle and I'm gonna go from the outside edges. Ooh, I forgot, I'm gonna make his curve. There we go, he's curving toward, he's swimming out from under this rock. So with my outside edges, I'm gonna follow the curve to the end of the fish body. And again, you already know how to do this. I'm going to make his tail partially hidden by the rock. So I'm gonna draw my ponytail line and it stops when it meets the rock. And same thing here, boom. When I go from the bottom of his body, I'm gonna go till I hit the rock and stop. I have just done a little overlapping, so it looks like he's coming out from underneath the fish. All right, so I've got that. I'm gonna add his fins right up here. I'm going to add his eyeball, bulgy eyeballs, right on the edge of his head and the pupil. I'm gonna add his lips, boom. His whiskers, you already know how to do all this. And he's kind of done, so I'm going to erase what I don't need. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now I'm going to do a second koi in the water. He's going to be a junior koi. So he's going to be a little smaller, and he's really going to be coming out from behind this rock. So I'm going to start my circle here. Notice, much smaller than my first guy. Here's his backbone. Stop when you hit the rock. And then I'm going to go from the outside edges of that circle and I'm going to curve and stop. And I'm going to curve and stop. Now you know what this means, don't you? You won't see the tail because it's hidden under the rock. Wee! You just got out of drawing a tail, but you do have to do the right size fins and lips and whiskers and eyeballs. Doesn't matter what order you draw them in. So we sort of have Big Daddy Koi and Baby Koi. Again, race what you don't need. All right, and then we're gonna start about with painting our scene. One last thing that would be nice to add is some greenery because there are green things floating in a pond. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna trail a little line that goes across the page, yes? I might do one that comes out. Looky here, we're gonna do some overlapping. Stop when you hit the fish, come out the other side, and go off the paper. And on those little trailing vines, you already know how to do this. You're gonna add some lemon shapes, some leaves, if you wanna draw the straight line first and then add the sides, you can do that. You won't need the line in the middle. And we're just gonna make kind of a little trailing vine. Now look at what I am not doing. I'm gonna use this vine here. I'm not making a big fat leaf connecting to a skinny vine, no. It connects with just a little point. So I would erase one side if that happens. Start right at the bottom. Where it connects to the vine is a very skinny spot. Yes, some of your leaves could go behind the rock. All right, so no big fat connector. If you can see that, don't need that, no. We're gonna do a skinny connection point. And so now we have a little greenery in the back of our koi fish. We're really starting to see something here. And now we get to the fancy point of using our crayons and watercolors to complete our fish scene. So stay tuned for that. Looky here, I have really made some progress. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to do the next part of this project with paint and crayons. So here we go. 
I have my rocks and you notice that I used a little brown and a little black to kind of give it that rocky look. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. I drew one extra little rock in this corner. So let's talk first about um, the rocks. Before we do that though, take a look. I drew my two fish with pencil, uh, big daddy of them all and the smaller guy. And I have outlined them with Sharpie, skinny, skinny Sharpie. And I have taken an orange crayon and also done a fence. So I'll show you that in a moment, okay? Draw your fish, get your vines going. You know, your curvy line that we're gonna put some leaves on here. All right, and your fish, okay? And then here's how we start with our rocks. The first thing I'm going to need is a brown crayon. And everything in this picture will be outlined first with a skinny Sharpie and then a crayon. So I'm going to put a fence. The outline is done in Sharpie. So now I am doing a fence of crayoning. How is a fence different than an outline? Well, a fence with a crayon is a thicker line. It's just a little bit more than one line thickness, okay? There's my fence, and I'm gonna to explain to you why we do a fence with this painting in a minute. Now I'm gonna take my watercolors, scrape, scrape, scrape my brush, and you remember how this goes. We're gonna create a puddle of water in the brown paint center, rub it a little bit, and bring it over to the tray. Yep, we're gonna paint with the puddle, and I'm gonna scrape my brush and start painting it in. Here's what you notice. When you get near that crayon fence, the paint doesn't go over it. It just kind of stops. And what's great about that is it keeps you from painting brown into the area that's gonna be blue. The crayon fence stops that from happening. And here I go. I'm gonna complete painting in my rock. I like some areas that are darker than others, and I'll even add a touch of black. I just tapped into the black. And while the paint is wet, I'm gonna add some squiggly lines to show the texture of the rock. Not too much black. Ooh, don't go too crazy, all right? And that is simply all there is. Put up a crayon fence and paint it in with your puddle of brown, okay? All right, so that would be done on all of the rocks that you've drawn in your picture. Next, I'm going to get out my nice green crayon. I want a nice dark one, if I can find mine. And I am going to outline, now we're just outlining the vine lines. The little lines that you've drawn, kind of curvy, and look, I can go right on top with a nice dark green. You can go right on top of, I'm looking for my darker green here. I can go right on top of the rock that I've already painted. That's the beauty of it. Of course, I'm gonna have to dump my whole box of crayons just to find my dark green. Here it is. And I'm gonna widen it a little bit. Make a second row, because this is a vine. There we go. I kind of like the two colors for sure. Two colors in nature, always. All right, so I hadn't drawn my leaves yet, but you remember those are like so. And I'm gonna add those green leaves, all right. Could one be on top of the koi's body? Why, yes, it could. And then I'm gonna outline those, fence them, and then outline and fence. Fence means make it thicker. Look, you're almost all the way colored when you do that. You can use that second color of green if you have it to do the inside of the leaves. If you don't, that's fine too. You can do them all the same color, green. Outline, a little fence, make it a little thicker. And if you have light green, go ahead and fill it in. All right, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to finish my vines. And here's one that's all colored in the same color. You see it doesn't hurt to have a little mix. 
I'm going to put one down here. If I'm going on top of something that's watercolored, I'm going to use my darker color. Make sense? And likewise, up at the top, remember when you're tracing with your Sharpie to stay on the lines. And I purposely went off the line here to show you that after you trace with your Sharpie, if you have some pencil lines that are showing, just go in and clean up your drawing like we always do. Get rid of the pencil lines. All right, stay as close as you can on the track, but if you go off, clean it up when you're done. Now with your crayon, you're gonna have to stay on pretty close. I'm gonna put one right there. Add some leaves. Well, how many leaves should I do, Mrs. Barnes? Well, I don't know. There's no right or wrong answer, but I always think a little more looks better. Put up a little fence. We already have the outline, fence. And either color it in all one color or add that second shade, two color rule in nature. All right. Ooh, I forgot and I didn't put the fence. So I'm just gonna add a little shading in there. There we go. And so on and so forth till you complete your vine. All right, we've got it. Beautiful. All right. We're starting to see a nice background for these fish. Now, let's get some texture. We know fish are scaly, and we're going to use some texture. Now, we know that koi fish have some really dark orange, like a red orange. That's what I have here. If you don't have that, you can just use regular orange. We also know that they have some black, and I'm so sad my black crayon is broken, but hey, I'm a heavy hand, so black. Okay, and then white. You can leave some parts of the fish white. Now, because we're gonna be watercoloring this, and we've done this before in class, if you want something white, you're gonna to have to color it white even though the paper is white, all right? And so one of the things I've done here is use some bumpy lines on this fish to add some texture, some scales. And here's how that looks, bump, Touching or not, bump. Can you draw a letter U? If you can, you can do these bumps. Now, right in the middle of these two bumps, we're gonna connect, boom. And then again, boom. And I might just do one here. Okay, so I've hinted at some scales on this fish. Guess what I'm also gonna use? White. Hard to see, but I'm gonna do bump, bump, connect over the top of the bump, especially in his head. I'm gonna add some of these white scales. And they're just U shapes, okay? Maybe a couple here, yeah? All right, now I've got my orange, my black, my white. I'm actually going to take white and color right over the top of my Sharpie color inside of his eyeballs. I'm going to color his whole head with a white crayon. And my orange is smearing a little bit into the white. I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna let it go because these fish have flecks of color. They're very boldly patterned. So there we go, I've got my white. You can always tilt your paper in a certain way in the light to see if you've got the white colored. I am pressing very hard. Will you do the same? Hard press, okay. And then I'm going to <clears throat> Add a patch of orange here. I'm just doing a scribble. Yeah, that's it. I'm not drawing the shape first. I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna draw a little scribble. Pressing hard, there he goes. Starting to look like a koi. So now I've got my white crayon. I'm gonna come in side here. Uh-huh, it's smearing a little. I'm all right with that, you. And some white. Mm -hmm. Pressing very hard, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my orange, touch it up against, and I'm going to color some patches. He's gonna be mostly orange. So I'm gonna come up in here. Uh-huh, and do some scribbles. <sighs> Have to keep blowing or tap those crumbs away. You can kind of get away with brushing, but you gotta be careful not to mush as you brush. Does that make sense? Just lightly. 
Come back in with my black. And I'm gonna press very hard and do a little black in here. And some white around it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to keep it out of the black if I can. There we go. Getting my white in here. Yeah. Now I think his fins are gonna be orange. So I'm gonna outline. Mm -hmm. Fence and fill. Put up the fence. The outline is in black, Sharpie. Yeah. Fence it and fill it in. And give him some orange lips. Ooh, I want to stay inside that shape there. And some skinny orange whiskers. Got it? All right, so I'm going to add some texture with scales white crayon and orange. And then I'm gonna use whatever colors of orange, black, and white. And I'm just gonna do some scribble patterns. Add a little extra scale right there. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Put your nice fence up and fill it in. Careful coloring here. Put up your fence and fill it in and so on and so forth, and we're gonna begin painting next. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna add more bumps of white for scales, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a real patch of black up here by his head. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Do you see that I forgot to outline right here? Really important to put an outline of orange a fence, I should say, of orange. So the blue water won't go into your fish and the orange from your fish won't go into the blue water. So let's get that done real quick. There we go, all the way around. And there is my fence, all right. So then I'm going to add a big splotch of color in orange here. And I'm going to do some white splotch touching up against. Mm -hmm. It's okay if the colors mix a little. I think I need another black dot on this fish, maybe up against the edge of his body here. Uh -huh. And I'm not drawing that shape, I'm just, you know, coloring it, so to speak. And down here on the tail, right at the end. All right, these guys look like the koi that I've seen in the first video. So, all we're going to do to complete the koi fish is we're going to take our paint and I'm going to make a puddle in my orange. I'm going to stir it around a little bit. I had some yellow here. I don't mind that too bad, bringing my orange over. And once I have a nice puddle to paint with, I can add a little water if I need to. Then I'm going to start very carefully, scrape off your brush, and then you can just paint right over the top of what you've colored here. I don't even have to worry about the eyes so much because I've colored in with a white crayon, okay? Very important. Get a little more color on here. I can paint right over everything. Now, I personally like the freckles that are left behind when the paint kind of beads up on the crayon. If you don't like that, you can tap it with a paper towel, but I love it. All right, so I've got my puddle. Bring water to the orange, make a puddle, stir it around, move it to the tray over here, scrape your brush, and paint right over the top. Now you'll see where I use the white crayon to create scales. Of course, the paint does not stick to that. And I can see those really cool scales showing up. Okay. All right. Don't forget to color the whites of your eyes so that they don't look orange. And you can go over it. I kind of like that. Two very different koi fish. Now, you can also take a little darker paint by not painting with the puddle, but come over here and you can add some darker orange 
in some sections. That's perfectly okay too. All right, and there we go. Oomphing him up. You've mostly colored his fins, so you don't have to worry about those. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do your painting of your koi fish. So let's talk about painting the water. One of the first things I'm going to do, you know what, I have a nifty brush. And I can get these crumbs off when I want to do that. You can use your hand very lightly or a tissue to kind of brush away. One of the things I want to do, and we did it in your otter picture, was to, to create some ripples of water. So I'm going to kind of do a spiral. I'm overlapping his little uh, fin because when he flaps in through the water, it might create a little ripple of water here, okay? I'm gonna do another spiral here, a little movement in the water. I'm gonna add a line of white that kind of wiggles in the same direction the fish is swimming to show movement in our picture, okay? And maybe another spiral here. And just, I am pressing really hard. Okay, and there you have it. Now we have an outline of crayon around our rocks, around our fish, and we have our crayon in vines. So we are going to create a wash. And you remember that is adding water to the color. Ooh, I kind of blew it, people. I didn't scrub my brush very good. I'm gonna scrape, stir, and scrape the blue over to the tray and give myself enough puddle to paint with, okay? If I think, ooh, this is kind of dark, I can add water, scrape my brush into it. It makes a larger puddle and gives me more paint to paint with. Now watch, I have to be careful when I'm painting next to my rock, the crayon will stop me, but it won't if I keep going, so. But I can paint right over the top of my greens. There we go. There we go. So I'm gonna use my brush, get in here. Don't paint over the top of your rocks, but the crayon fence will keep you from going too far. I can paint right over the top of my greenery. I'm gonna go close to the edge of my fish and the crayon outline will keep us out of it, out of the fish, that is. And I'm just gonna keep working until I complete my whole painting. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how your koi fish project is done. Now, ah, I went far. While it's wet, I can kind of wipe it away really quick with a tissue or just with my finger. So yes, you can get close to the edge of the fish and not have to worry, but you can't go crazy and go inside. You'll have to wipe it off or tissue it off. And I'm going to keep going until I very neatly and evenly paint all of the water. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna come back together and I'm going to show you how to do a lily pad with a flower floating on the top of the water. And that'll really add some depth to this picture. We'll see the fish swimming and the lily pad and the lily flower point uh, floating on top. All right, so drawing, outlining, texturing, painting, and then let's join up for the lily pad. Alrighty then, here's my finished painting. I experimented with a little markering on the side to make it like a frame. You can do that all the way around. You don't have to. Just kind of showing you how it turns out. And now I'm ready. I'm gonna put him aside a little bit and I am going to use the green that you received with your packet and two squares of pink, and we're gonna create a lily pad with a lily to go on top of our picture as an added accent, okay? So I'm gonna start with creating the lily, and I'm using a pink marker to draw with. You can use a pencil first, it doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna use a pink marker, okay? And if you remember, we drew great flowers in the past on our projects by doing a plus sign and then an X right through the middle. And as you can see, I'm going almost out to the edges, right? All right, from there, I'm going to find the in-between spot between two lines and I'm gonna start going up, bump, go out to the outside, bump and into the middle, 
out to the outside and bump into the middle, out to the very edge of the paper, bump, and I'm going to do that again all the way around. Be sure to go in deep enough to the center. There we go. Now, I'm going to take my scissors, and I won't bore you by cutting the whole thing out while you're watching, but I'm going to very carefully stay on the line, and I'm going to cut this guy out. All right? So I'm going to do that to both of my pieces of pink paper. I'm going to create and cut. Once again, let's do it together. I'm going to make this one a little smaller so my plus sign won't go all the way out to the edges this time. And then my X. Find a spot in between and bump out and in. Out and in. Out and in. All the way around. And I have two pink flowers. One's a wee bit smaller than the other. So I'm going to cut those out and I'm gonna come back to you. I have my two pink flowers cut out. As you can see, one's a little smaller than the other, not too much. The next thing I'm gonna do is, this is the side I drew them on, this becomes the back side. We don't want that to show. So we're gonna flip these flowers over, and I am taking a pink crayon, pink on pink, and I'm just going to kind of fence around the outside edge and come in on the tips a little bit. What I'm doing is kind of shading this flower to make it look a little more interesting and not so flat. Okay, fancy, yes. Necessary, not 100%. If you have a pink marker, you could do it. You could just go around the outside and add a little detail, oops, to each petal. Got it? And I'm done with that. And I'll do it with this around the outside. You know, it's good to practice your cutting skills, whether you're doing a project for me or just in general. Good cutters are important. Being a good cutter is important. You can cut pictures out of magazines if you have them. My kid used to do collages, like he was into football, so he would get Sports Illustrated kids magazines, old ones that he had, and he would cut out shapes around the football players and glue them on a poster. Yeah, there we go. Two, if you have Elmer's glue, you're going to take and put, I gotta let my glue come down into the tip here, very small, that's good enough. It, a little will do you. Remember, glue is like underwear, you don't want it to show. Makes a mess of your project. Now watch. I'm going to kind of use my fingers to curl this up. Mm-hmm. Because I want it to be really 3D. Curve it up a little bit, bend it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to turn this a different direction. I want to line it up perfectly. I'm going to turn it a little bit and put it on. There we go. And then what I might do is take my bright yellow marker and just kind of do a, ooh, you might want to wait till it dries a little bit. Do a little starburst, a puff ball right in the center. There we go. Now I have a lily that is gonna look gorgeous with my koi fish. Here's my green paper. And here's what we're gonna do. We're going to make kind of a big circle. Looky, I'm not even trying to make it perfect at all, but I do want it to be almost the size of the square. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a V in the side of one of my, or one side of my round lily pad, okay? When I cut this out, and here I go, boom. Do I want this to be a little bumpy? I'm going to go deep inside the V and come back out. And then I'm going to continue going all the way around. Got it? Now, just like my lily itself, I can take a green marker or a green crayon and add some lines that come out. You won't see too much of this when you glue the flower on, but you will see the darker edges. So here's what I'm doing, coloring around the edge. 
I have a different kind of paper than you do. Mine is not really uh, like the same construction paper you have, so it doesn't really take the marker as well. There you go. Then I'm going to put a spot of glue, and when I say a spot, that's what I mean. Yep, and I'm going to attach that. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You have just created a 3D, stands up from the paper, uh, Lily. Now, I can't move it till it dries, but I'm going to try anyway. You can let yours dry before you start fiddling with it. We're gonna bring our fish back in, and I'm gonna decide where on the paper I wanna glue it. Now, here's the deal, people. You could have it, actually, and it's hard for me to move because I'm not waiting for it to dry. Please wait for yours to dry. But here's the deal. You could put it so that it is covering a fish because we want this to look 3D like the fish is kind of swimming underneath the lily. So anywhere you decide to glue it will be just fine, including over the top of your koi fish, okay? So you're going to kind of move it around. Again, wait till it dries. And then you're going to decide the very best place that you would like it to be. And I'm just going to do it there, I think. I kind of like that. And so once I wait for all of this to dry, which I'm not going to do because I want you to see how it's done, I'm going to put just a spot of Elmer's. And I do mean a spot, meaning a scribble. Just that will hold it, and I'm gonna put it in exactly where I want it to be. Everything's moving around a bit right now, but this is exactly how you do your Koi Fish Art Project. I hope you've enjoyed it. You've learned how to draw fish. We've worked on, let's see, line and texture and shape and color and pattern. You've learned how to watercolor with markers and with paint and to do a wash even though we haven't been together, you've learned a lot. So I hope you enjoy this. You know it is our last project and that school will be out this week. So enjoy this last project and stay tuned to have mom and dad let you know. We'll be in touch about when we might be able to have a picnic to say goodbye and happy summer. So love all of you. Have enjoyed working with you so much. You're my favorite artists. Have a great week and be sure to share how you've done your koi fish on the parent portal. Love to you all. Bye.